Hello everyone. In this video, we will be focusing on exercises based on ER model concepts. This is part one of this video. The first exercise problem here is, consider the ER diagram shown in the figure for part of a bank database. Each bank can have multiple branches and each branch can have multiple accounts and loans. So this is the figure that they have given, which is an ER diagram of a bank database. Now based on this ER diagram, let us see few questions. The first question is, list the non-weak or the strong entity types or the entity types that are not weak in the ER diagram. As we have already learned in the previous videos that the non-weak or the regular or the strong entity types are represented by a rectangle. So based on this figure, such entity types that are represented by single rectangle are bank, account, loan and customer entity type. So that is the answer for this question. Hope you understood how to identify the non-weak or the strong entity types. The second question is, is there a weak entity type? If so, give its name, partial key and identifying relationship. So first we need to identify if there is a weak entity type in this figure. As we know, weak entity types are represented by double rectangle. So here the weak entity type in this figure is bank branch. And the relationship between the weak entity type and the strong entity type is called the identifying relationship which is represented by a double diamond. Now let's try to answer this question. The first part of the question is, is there a weak entity type? The answer to this question is yes. If so, or if there is a weak entity type, give its name, partial key and identifying relationship. So the name of the weak entity type is bank branch and the partial key is represented by a dotted line under the attribute name. So here the partial key is branch number and we also need to specify the identifying relationship. In this figure, the identifying relationship is branches. The third question is, what constraints do the partial key and the identifying relationship of the weak entity type specify in this diagram? We know that the partial key is branch number and the identifying relationship is branches. So the solution to this question is, the constraint of the partial key branch number is that we need to combine this partial key branch number with the key attribute of the strong entity type and not just any strong entity types but that strong entity type which it identifies its relationship with. So here this weak entity type identifies its relationship with this strong entity type bank. So this partial key has to be combined with the key attribute of bank that is code which is the owner entity type key to uniquely identify the weak entity type that is bank branch. So this is the constraint of the partial key as given in the diagram. Next the constraints of the identifying relationship are the first one is the weak entity set must have total participation in the identifying relationship set branches. Here we are specifying the constraints based on what is given in the diagram. So here in this diagram, the constraint of this identifying relationship is that the weak entity type must have total participation or must participate totally or completely in this identifying relationship type branches. The next constraint is the identifying relationship between bank and the bank branch must be one to many. This is again given in the diagram. The relationship between bank and bank branch is one to many, which means that bank branch can only have one bank as its owner. So these are the constraints of the partial key and the identifying relationship. Hope you have understood them. Now let's move on to the next question. List the names of all relationship types and specify the min-max constraint on each participation of an entity type in a relationship type. Justify your choices. First, let us identify or name all the relationship types in this diagram. They are branches, accounts, loans, AC or account customer relationship, LC, loan customer relationship. So there are five relationship types in this diagram. 
I have represented it this way where the relationship types are mentioned along with the min max constraint which they have asked in the question. Let us discuss each of them. So for the first relationship type branches, we have bank and the bank branch as the entity types. Here all the banks have branches, so a total participation which is represented as one and it can have at most or maximum any number of branches or n number of branches. So therefore the min max constraint is 1 comma n. Similarly, all the bank branches is a branch of one or the other bank. So again a total participation which is represented as one and one bank branch belongs to or can have at the most or maximum one bank as its owner and therefore the min max notation here is 1 comma 1. Let us see the next one. Here it is a relationship type accounts which relates or associates two entity types bank branch and account. Here a bank branch may or may not have accounts. So a partial participation which is represented as zero. And one bank branch can have at the most or maximum n number of accounts. So therefore zero comma n. Similarly, all the accounts of the customers belongs to one or the other bank branch and hence a total participation which is represented as one. And one account can belong to at the most or maximum one branch. Therefore one comma one. The next relationship type is account customer which relates account and customer. Here all the accounts has one or the other customer and hence a total participation which is represented as one. And one account can have at the most or maximum n customers considering joint account. Similarly, all the customers need not have an account, therefore a partial participation. And one customer can have at the most or maximum n number of accounts. The next relationship type is LC which relates loan and customer. So all the loans that are availed belongs to or is taken by one or the other customer. Therefore a total participation represented as one. And one loan can be availed by maximum or at the most n customers. Again considering joint accounts. Similarly, not all customers avail or take loans. Therefore a partial participation and one customer can take a maximum of any number of loans. So therefore zero comma n. And the last relationship loans connects loan and bank branch. Here the loans avail belong to one or the other bank branch and therefore a total participation. And one loan cannot belong to many branches. At the most or maximum it can belong to only one branch. And a bank branch need not necessarily have a loan taken. Sometimes only few branches may have loans avail and not all the branches necessarily. So therefore a partial participation represented as zero. One bank branch can have at the most or maximum any number of loans taken. So therefore zero comma n. Hope you have understood how to specify the min max constraints. The fifth question is list concisely the user requirements that led to this ER schema design. Generally they give the requirements and based on that we have to draw an ER diagram. Here they have given an ER diagram and based on what we see in the diagram we can define the requirements. So the requirements can be stated as follows. So first in this ER diagram we have identified five entity types. Bank, bank branch, account, loan and customer. Now let's see the requirements. The first one is each bank has a unique code, name and address. So our first requirement is about the bank entity type with its attributes. We also need to mention that this particular attribute is unique. The second requirement is each bank has one or more branches, each of which has a branch number and address. Here we have mentioned about the next entity type bank branch and its attributes. The next requirement is each bank branch has zero or more loans and zero or more accounts. That is each bank branch may or may not have loans and may or may not have accounts. The next requirement is each account has a unique account number, type and balance. It is related to exactly one bank branch and to at least one customer. So this requirement is about this entity type account. 
and this entity type is related to exactly one bank branch that is one account can belong to at the most or maximum one branch and it is related to at least one customer that is any account that exists belongs to minimum one customer hope you have understood the fourth requirement let us see the next requirement each loan has a unique loan number amount and type it is also related to exactly one bank branch and to at least one customer so this is about the loan entity type and its attributes and again the loan entity type is related to exactly one bank branch and this entity type is related to at least one customer that is any loan that is taken or availed belongs to or is taken by at least one customer this requirement is similar to the previous requirement that we have seen now the last entity type that we have is customer so the next requirement is each customer has a unique ssn or social security number and also each customer has the attributes name address and phone and is related to zero or more accounts and zero or more loans as already mentioned previously the customer entity type may or may not have accounts and may or may not take loans so these are the user requirements that i've listed based on this er diagram you can also write the requirements in your own way just that you have to mention about the entity types its attributes the relationship types and also any other important information that we need to list out moving on to the last question suppose that every customer must have at least one account but is restricted to at most two loans at a time and that a bank branch cannot have more than 1000 loans how does this show up on the min max constraints so here in this question it is given that every customer must have at least one account and the customer is restricted to at most or a maximum of two loans at a time it is also given that a bank branch cannot have more than 1000 loans this is the maximum value so they are asking about the min max constraint with this given information let us see the solution since they have mentioned in the question four entities that is customer account loans and bank branch i have taken those relationships from the er diagram given in the question that associates these four entities so we know this relationship ac relates or associates account and customer entity types as given in the question every customer must have at least one account so therefore a total participation represented by one and one customer can have a maximum of any number of accounts or n number of accounts so the min max constraint for the customer entity type is 1, n we have already seen the min max constraint of the account entity type in the earlier question and the min max constraints of the account and loan entity type are not going to change as per this question in the next relationship type loan customer every customer may or may not have loans so a partial participation that is represented as zero and as given in the question one customer is restricted to at the most or maximum two loans at a time so therefore the min max notation is 0,2 for this entity type these constraints we have already discussed in the earlier question and it is not going to change based on the given information in this question the only constraints that are going to change from what we discussed earlier are these constraints that belong to the customer and bank branch as per what is given in the question now in the next relationship loans every bank branch may or may not have taken or availed a loan so therefore a partial participation and again as given in the question one bank branch cannot have more than 1000 loans so the maximum value is 1000 therefore the min max constraint for this entity type bank branch is 0,1000 hope you have understood the exercise problem that we have discussed in this video thank you